Okay, in this video, we're going to walk through a very simple Terraform example where we create some basic resources with AWS. So I think the first thing you want to do is go to the video description and navigate to the readme file in the GitHub repository so we can walk through this together. So go ahead and do that. And once that's done, um, we'll first talk about what, what we're actually going to build. In AppJS, we're going to create a, a minimal VPC with one public subnet, and then we're going to put a EC2 instance with Ubuntu in that subnet with a user data script that is going to install Apache. So it'll just be a simple web server. First thing we want to do is clone this repository, download this repository. So I have some tough code in here you can just copy. I have a simple Ubuntu environment. And I'm going to go and paste that in there. And you will see it will grab it. And there is the project. OK, so that's the, the first step. The next step is there's some prerequisites. You need to have the AWS CLI installed. You need to have Terraform installed. You need to have Packer installed. And so I've already done that. So uh, if I do Packer, and they need to be in your path. So if I do Packer version, Terraform version, and then AWS version, once you have that, you're ready for the next step. So the next step is you want to get into your AWS account. Obviously, you're going to have to have an AWS account. The free tier should work fine for this example. And we need to walk through and create a IAM user and a secret key. So we're going to go to the AWS console. We're going to go to IAM. We're going to go to users. And under users, we're going to do create user. And we're going to give a name of Terraform. Hit next. And we're going to attach policies directly and do administrator access because we want to be able to build anything. And then we want to hit next. And then you hit create user. So the next thing is you need to create a access and secret key for that user. So I'm going to go into Terraform and I'm going to go to security credentials and I'm going to say create access key and it's going to be command line. Hit yes. Hit next. And let's just say uh, Terraform secret key, create access key. Now, this is the only screen where you actually can get both values. So you need to download it. Uh, I'm going to download it. And you want to be careful with this. You don't want to share it with anybody because um, they could basically run up a big account on your bill or bill on your account. And um, just in general, uh, once you're done with these, you probably want to revoke them. Uh, you need to have good key hygiene, I guess is good one way of describing it. So let's hit done. So now let's go on to the next step. The next step is the, you need to set the environment variables. Now I'm not going to do that because I don't want you to see my key. Um, but I've done that already, but there's bash script and there's PowerShell script. So uh, I've done that. And then once you've done that, there's a script called a check ENV you can run. So I do check ENV and you can see there it is. And the next is to run the apply script. So there's an apply script um, and I'm just gonna run it and let it get going. And now that it's running, let's take a quick look at the code. So if we look at the main.tf, you'll see I'm creating a very simple VPC, an internet gateway, so we can actually interact with the uh, EC2 instance from the internet, a route table for the, the internet traffic, uh, create the subnet, security groups for port 22, because uh, we do SSH, also port 80 because that's what the HTTP server is running on. And then we sign a key pair. We resolve Ubuntu from the Ubuntu account. Um, this stuff tends to change over time. So if, you're, if your build doesn't work, it may be 
Uh, the name has changed slightly, uh, but I, I think I picked something that's going to be consistent for the next couple of years. Then the EC2 instance. We use a small instance because we're cheap. I did the security groups, I set the key pair, and then we did the user data script. And that user data script is going to actually just install Apache, uh, do a system update, install Apache, and start it. Um, and then at the end, we output the IP address of um, what got built. So let's go back to the build. And you can see it's done. And we got that output of the IP address. So while it's initializing, let's go back to the console and take a look and see what it built. So the most obvious thing is this uh, EC2. And if I click on it, you can see instance settings, edit user data. You should see the user data. And there's that. Uh, if we go to the VPC, you should see the real simplistic VPCs that are in, created. And the setup VPC, it's very simple. So at this point, let's uh, connect to the server and see if it's uh, all working. So we're going to go back into here. I'm going to take this IP address, copy it. I'm going to go and uh, use your, I'm using MOBA X term, but use your, you know, favorite um, SSH client. I want to edit the session, put the IP address. The name is Ubuntu. Uh, advanced, you need to specify the key that's in the project. Uh, just a bit more settings, I'll do it like that. Hit OK. Now I should be able to go. And there we go. I've logged into that machine. Now I want to see if, let's see what we're going here. Top. All right, it looks like it started. So system CTL status Apache 2. Looks like it's running. So now I should be able to go back to here and take that, copy it again, and put it in a browser. And you should see uh, HTT. There we go. Put it in the browser and with HTTP, and you can see it's serving up the uh, Apache page. So that's it. It's created um it's ready to go now the only thing left to do after you've, you've played with it is you want to control costs so you're going to want to run the destroy so i'll get the destroyer going right now and we won't watch the entire thing but it's just going to destroy down the, the the everything that we just built